this is one of the most exciting parts about Dreamweaver or how I can create forms inside of Dreamweaver to talk to the database. When I first learned how to do this about 16, 17 years ago, I never looked back. I just thought it was the greatest thing that I could store my content inside my database and access it through Dreamweaver, through forms, searching, adding, deleting. It was the coolest thing. So let's get started. Now, we have two more tables inside of our cPanel MySQL database. So we want to create forms to populate that table. Now, important step here. This page, which is our index page, is going to be our home page. So this page is password protected already. So I don't want to reinvent the wheel here and create other pages from scratch. So what we could do here, which is very, very simple, we're going to put a hyperlink here called add products. So we're going to select this hyperlink, we're going to copy, in the link we're going to paste .php, except we're going to call this add underscore products. Now this page has not been created yet, I just want to be very clear about this, we haven't created the add products page, that's what we're about to do right now. So I'm going to take this page and I'm going to file save as file save as, save this as, paste. So we're going to call this add products.php. So this is our add products page. We're going to change the title to admin add products. Okay. Now, let's go back to our index page, because that page has to be up on the server. So we're going to upload to the server. We're going to say, command shift U, upload dependent files. No, we don't have any dependent files. We say no. So the add products page is going to go to the add products page. Now, let's think about this. If I'm on the add products page, I don't want this to say add products. I want this to say home. So this will simply say home, double click, and have to get our way back to the index page. Okay, now here's the super cool part. Creating forms is what Dreamweaver does from scratch. So if we come up here to our data tab, the tab that says data, there's a whole list of things we can do up here with dynamic forms. We can search, I'm sorry, we can insert, we can update, we can create a dynamic table, we can create a navigation system, etc., etc., etc. So the simplest way to do this is to insert a form. But before we do here, we're going to make a couple of changes. First of all, I want to put this form in the center of my page. So I'm just going to align to the center, command and shift option C for center. I'm just going to put this in the center of my page. We're not going to spend very much time at this particular case on CSS. We're just going to do database functionality using PHP MySQL. So command shift option S puts this in the center of my page here. So I'm going to go to insert a form. But before we do, let's think about something. Okay. Part of the reason I added the products table because I want the products table to pre-populate the I'm sorry, the category table. I want the category table to pre-populate the products table. So now, we talked about this before in an earlier video. Okay, so what I want to do here, I want to create a record set. So very important step here. Just like we're seeing this information when we log on, welcome user to the admin section. So we talked about this in great detail in a previous video. If you want to see information from database, so what do we want to see from the database? We want to see the category table from the database on this page. Autos, planes, trains, boats. So if you want to see information from the database, that has to come from a record set. Record set, so record, so under Server behaviors, we're going to say record set. We're going to add a record set called 
cats, as in category. So we're going to say RS cats. So if you want to see the information from the database, it has to come from a record set. Set of records, record set. So we're going to pick our same connection file. We're going to say category table. And we're going to filter this table. We just want to see uh, tables. We want to see field names that have a value set. Yes. So as an example, right now, all four categories, planes, trains, boats, and autos has been set to yes. So yes, we can see them. So that's the active field. So we're going to filter based on these choices here. We're going to filter the active field to be not a URL parameter. We're going to filter the active field to be a entered value. And we want the entered value to say yes. Now, what this means for us, guys, is if we set this to, if we go to the database right now, and we set autos to say no, autos is not going to show up. So everything set to yes, which by default, if you think about this, everything in the database for categories is set to yes. So if we hit test right now, we can see boats, planes, trains, autos, because the value has been set to active equals yes. That's why we put the active field. So we can choose from the database. We can choose to turn this stuff on or off by saying active equals yes, active equals no. Now, again, important step here. Okay, let's look at this. Now, I intentionally did not type this in alphabetically, or it doesn't matter that I did that. So right now, I want this to be alphabetically. It's not alphabetically. So based on these choices, these choices, I can sort the category name setting A through Z. A through Z will go A through Z. Z through A would be descending. So we're going to basically filter this to be entered value equals yes. Category sort, sort category to be ascending. Make a change, save a change. Okay, now we talked about this before. These server behaviors create bindings. Server behaviors, record sets create bindings. Record sets, server behaviors create bindings. Bindings populate the table. Bindings populate. So server behaviors, record set, cats, cats, bindings, bindings populate the page. Okay. So here is category. We're going to populate the pull down menu with the category name from the category table. So how can we do this? Very simply. Okay. We go up here and this icon, the first icon under the data tab to the right says record insertion form wizard. Record insertion form wizard. Now, anytime you see the word wizard, what that does for us, that gives us a step by step setting for doing things. So, earlier today, or earlier in a previous video, we went to the MySQL database wizard and set up the database for this particular project. So, we're going to go to record insertion form wizard. Now, what's the name of this dialog box? Record insertion form. Okay, so which table do we want to insert into? The answer is we're going to insert into the products table. Products table. Now, pay attention here. We can, we can say once I insert the form, we can say go to another page. Now, I'm not going to do that in this particular case, but you could do that. You can go to a page that says success or go to the list page or go to the product table page. We're not going to do that. Now, based on these choices, very important step here. We don't need to see the product ID because that is auto incremented inside the products table, inside the products table, inside the C panel. We set make the product ID auto-incremented. 
So that we don't have to worry about. So we can minus that out. The date we don't have to worry about because the date is going to be time stamped. So date doesn't have to be adjusted. So I can minus that out. Okay, the active field, we don't have to have the active field because the database is going to set a value of yes because we have a default value inside of our database called active equals yes for the products table. So we can minus that out. So the only fields we need right now are the category, category pull-out menu, the product name, and the price. Now, important step. These are text fields. I don't I want this to be a text field. That's totally acceptable. I want price to be a text field. That works for me. But the category name here, I don't want that to be a text field based on these choices. These choices, I want this to be a menu. More specifically, we're going to change the menu properties. This is going to be a pull down menu for the menu properties. So again, Price will be a text field. That's fine. Product name will be a text field. That's fine. Category name, etc. Now, this is the label name inside the database. So we're simply going to call that categories. And we're going to call this one products. By default, it's getting the information from the database table. Okay. So the category. Name is going to be set to menu, menu, menu properties based on these choices. These are my choices, dialog box choices. We're going to set this to database. Database, we're not going to basically talk to the record set admin. We're going to do record set category. Record set category. So this is going to be set to label. Label is what I see when I pull down the menu. Label is what I see when I pull the menu down. So I want to see the category name. The value that gets entered inside the database is going to be the same thing. Category name. So let's think about this. This could be U.S. states. This table could be for U.S. states. So the label could say NJ, but the value enters New Jersey. The value could say CT, the value is Connecticut. The label could say UT, but the value entered is Utah. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so record set. We're going to talk to the record set call cats. Incidentally, this has to be set up first before you do this. Otherwise, it's going to be a little uh, cumbersome to do it the other way. So you have to kind of think ahead here. We're going to create a record set. We created the record set for categories first before we went to the record insertion form. So record set category label is going to be name. Value is going to be name. It's going to be the same thing. We hit OK. We hit OK. And there's our form. So Dreamweaver created this dynamic form for us. So we're going to do some changes here. So price doesn't need to be this long. So we're going to go to characters and we're going to say, let's make this six pixels, six digits. Now, so a person doesn't put it the price symbol. We're going to arrow key to the left of this and we're going to put it in the price symbol. So the person knows not to put in the price symbol. Okay. Now we don't want this to say insert records. We want this to say add products, so add products. Okay. Now here's the important thing. If we go to live view right now, live view. Okay. Testing server. Yes. Dependent files. We don't have any dependent files. Okay. So we log into our database. So we're going to log into our database. So we logged into our database. Then we're on the landing page, the password protected admin page. We're going to just click add products. It's going to select this page. This is the page we just got done correcting, which is properly titled up here, admin add products. Now pay close attention here. 
by default, this is going to appear, autos is going to appear, because that's the alphabetically first field we sort it to, the autos field name. Autos field is going to appear before boats and appear before points. Now, very important step here, since most people do not pay attention to what they're doing, we don't want to set this default back to autos because otherwise a person's not going to think and they're going to put in autos when they meant to put in boats because they don't pay attention. So to avoid that from happening, we're going to go back to Dreamweaver. So back inside Dreamweaver. So back inside of Dreamweaver, we're going to make some changes here. So we don't want the default to autos because if somebody's not paying attention, every field, every record is going to say autos because that was the first choice. So to avoid that from happening, we're going to select this list menu. We're going to get down here. So we're going to select this list menu. We're going to click dynamic and we're going to manually put in a value and a label. We're not going to fill in a value. We're going to fill in a label here. So we're going to get the plus symbol. For value, we're going to leave that blank because the database will not allow it to be blank. We want to prompt the user if, in fact, they don't pick a choice here. So we're simply for here going to say pick one or please choose or don't be a knucklehead and do this the correct way. So we're just going to say pick one. So now this pull down menu will say pick one. And if they don't pick one, they'll get error message saying that they need to pick one. So rather than say autos at this point, this is now going to say, this is now going to say pick one once I log back in.